wearing our glasses. We are wearing our glasses, very professional of us. Uh, hi Judy, welcome to um, having a chat with Jo. I like to have a chat with Back to Basic members to share a little bit of your journey and a story to other people because um, we all have something different in our lives. So whilst most people come in and they say to me, you know, Jo, I want to lose weight, there's a bigger picture to why people want to lose weight. And um, what I like is to listen and sharing what's happening with you and your journey and if you want to share a little bit with other people. So before you came in to see me or you made a phone call to come in for a chat, what was the main reason why you decided, I need to go and do something about my weight? Okay, um, mainly for me it was not so much about weight, it was about inches yeah. um, and things being tight and not wanting to go up um, another size in yeah. clothes. Because you're quite a small frame. so. Even though um, you know people might look at you and go, well, you don't really need to lose weight, but for you, because you've got a small build and a small frame, even two, three, four kilos on your body frame, you can really feel that. And then your clothes were getting tighter. So mm -hmm. it was important for you to sort of bring that down because what would happen if you didn't take control and bring it down? What was happening? Uh, I felt like it was, um, I was about to go up a size in clothes. I felt like I was, um, a bit lethargic yeah. um, and um, I could just see that it was just going to get more and more if, if I didn't take control of it, yeah. that it was going to get worse yeah. um, and because it was concentrated in a particular area. Yeah and as females yeah. we get that top, just right under that rib cage as we get older, yeah. we tend to get that little bit of extra roll there and it yeah. seems solid and hard to move. and, and I think you'd said to me that you know you'd do it, you'd been exercising for three months and it wasn't even shifting it. So yeah. you yeah. found that you know you're putting all that effort in and you yeah. still weren't getting the results. So um, then you know we had to look at another alternative. Well, why is this not happening? And so how did you feel then when you started changing the foods that you were eating after we went through a session and I explained uh, and I think you were quite alarmed at the sugars because you did yeah. have a little bit of a sugar a sugar craving rush I, there. I do all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll ever lose that, but I think I've got it under control. So I substitute something else if I get that urge for something sweet. And what was your biggest problem that you had with the sugar cravings? Um, on your desk? Well, not on my desk. It was in the kitchen, oh, the, in the lolly kitchen. jar. The lolly, lolly jar. jar. I thought it was on your desk. Yeah, so yeah, every yeah, time at work, worse. every time at work, what um, Judy used to do is that she used to go past and take one, two, three, a handful, a handful of jelly beans, yes. and then that was your biggest downfall because it consistently, it was almost like it was calling you and you had to keep going back yeah. and you'd go yeah. back and grab another handful. And it was a craving and it was because it was like the two o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. uh, it was a bit of boredom, um, feeling like I needed a bit of an energy hit, yeah. and instead of eating properly, I chose the lollies because yeah. it was easy. And now, fast forwarding the time frame that you've been with me, how has that transitioned and changed? So, do the jelly beans annoy you anymore? No, no, I can walk past that jar. I reckon I've probably had six black jelly beans in the last month. Yeah. And that's over a month. And so. we've been together, we've been working together for over three months. Well, we've seen right. each other on and off for over three months. It's a bit, yes. of, a bit of like a relationship, really. <laughs> um, but over that time frame, you know, lots of things have changed for you. So what is the biggest thing that you've noticed that's changed since being on the Healthy Living program? Um, well, obviously my clothes are, are feeling a lot looser. Um, I think I've got lots more energy. Yeah. Uh, and um, I sleep quite well. I'm not craving the sugars as much as I was. Uh, um, I, really. um, I think that was. Oh, I think even when you said you had more energy, even looking at um, because you're quite an active person anyway, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. And you were noticing that you were sort of a little bit too tired. You're normally a motivated type person, yeah. but yeah, you were feeling that sluggishness and um, that up and go and that drive. And in the beginning, I think. You also found a little bit overwhelming because you're confused on what you should be doing. Yeah, I, yeah, I was. I, I think before I came to see you and the exercise wasn't working. If you don't know what path to take, you might get a fatty type thing going because someone's told you yeah. that worked, but it might not work for you. So I needed to have guidance with not just at the gym or yeah. whatever. You know, they do that kind of programs at gym, but I thought that wasn't right for me. Yeah, and you sort of were eating, eating quite healthy, but when I had a look at your food journal, 
were you surprised at how many hidden sugars I sort of shared with you oh, yes. in what was in your day? And yeah. that really was an eye-opener on why you were struggling to bring your weight yeah. down? Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there was a lot. It was a lot when it we looked at it. Not, not, even talking about, not even talking about the sugars as yeah. in the lollies. It was the other foods that you sort of no. weren't really aware of. I and think I was constantly nibbling. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was bread-based. Yeah. For me, because that seems to be the go-to thing you go to, yeah. you know. And now I find I'm not missing that. Yeah, and you've, we've changed up a lot of. And what are some of the favourite meals that you've cooked whilst being on the program? Because I know that we discussed about there was two that you said said that was I really enjoyed these meals. Yeah, well, um, I really like the eggplant rolls. Yeah, which is a new favourite of everyone's because I've yeah. done done the little short videos. Yeah, um, and well, for me, I find. Um, Cooking um, a meal for just one person yeah. um, is there's actually too much food, and yeah. I have to eat it for days. So um, I find for me, fish or steak and salad yeah. are my favourites. That's where I'll go to. Um, but I really like the eggplant rolls, yeah. and, um, and you I can think, also freeze them up too. And that's yeah. because um, Judy is single and she's at home. When she does the cooking, sometimes when you're a single person, it can be a little bit boring. But then, if we do a little bit of a cook up, you can yeah. then freeze them, freeze. and you yeah. have all these different meals, and we can rotate them out. Yeah. And it makes your meal time more interesting as well. Yeah, it's remember me remembering to take them out of the freezer <laughs> before I go to work. <laughs> and did you find when we went through the program, your accountability sessions really helped with you? Yes. Yeah, I don't think I would have been able to do it without having somebody to talk to, even though I wasn't actually on scale. Yeah. Um, I would listen in. I didn't participate much, but coming into the office is, yeah. helped me and I've asked questions and, you know, been able to be guided the right way. Yeah, because yeah. we have an online support group and we have Accountability Monday, which everyone checks in and we can, you know, check in with our scales. And Judy doesn't have scales at home at all, but when she came in to do her session, she'd pop on the scales. But in, this, in the Accountability Monday time, she could see what was happening. She could listen in yeah. to any conversations that I had or any tips or... Um, anything that I'd like you to complete for the week or anything like that. So that was really helpful for yeah, you to do then. Um, and did you find, so overall, we know it wasn't a big weight thing, but how much weight have you lost so far? Um, six kilos. Six kilos. Yes. But more importantly, for this last month, I haven't seen Judy for a month, have you maintained your weight? I have. Plus another 300 grams down, yeah. uh, and you know we've had a few. You've had a few social things because I've seen a few little posts through Facebook. So I know yeah. that you've been quite social. But have you found it hard to maintain that weight for the last month? No, no, not at all. It hasn't been a struggle at all. Um, I've even found I can have the occasional glass of Shiraz. And yeah. So I can and, be sociable that way yeah. too. And that's yeah. what it's about. So whilst I change your foods in the beginning. It's more so I can educate you on how to have it as a lifestyle change because we're all going to be human. We're going to have a glass of wine or a beer or something like that occasionally, but it's understanding how you can fit into your lifestyle plan yeah. so you can maintain your weight. So we don't have to give everything up forever, no. but we need to understand how do we make, make, sorry, how do we need to make changes so that you can maintain your weight not just for now, but in the future. So we're educating you for the future. Well, I think that's the more important part than actually losing any weight in the first place. Mm. Because if you want to have a long life and have a good active life, yes. then I think you've got to make a decision to look after yourself yes. and treat it as a lifestyle. Uh, because, you know, fad diets, you hear that they don't yes. work. Or they do work, but then they, you know, change or they put that weight back on yes. very quickly. Correct. And what does your future health mean to you? So you probably don't mind me saying how old you are. Are we allowed to? Yeah, we don't have to. <laughs> so how old are you, Judy? I'm 68. So what does your future health mean to you? Being that you're 68, it means a lot different than someone who's 20. But what does it mean to you? Well, I, I guess it means uh, a long life, as yeah. long as possible, uh, but a good active life rather than someone being put in and old people saying yeah. that might happen eventually, but you know, the later the better. And what did um, your grandkids say? Well, that I'm not like all other old people. <laughs> yeah, she's not like other old people, yeah. Grandma. Because <laughs> I play soccer and I kick a ball. And, and you ride a bike, bike with them, yeah. yeah. So, um, but so being active is really what you want into your future because 
we don't want to be full of sickness and you know yeah. unhealthy and not be able to do the things because you know even at you at 68 you don't look 68 and you are a very active person um, and being unwell and not being able to do that would set you back I would I, I would hate it yeah I, I would hate to be a burden to other people as mm. well and that's another aim is to not be a burden yeah. to be you know able to look after myself as yeah. long as I can yeah um, and I think that's the aim of most older people these yeah. days is yeah. Yeah. and as I'm getting older I'm noticing the same thing yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my perception is totally different to as I said when I was younger Okay, is there anything you would like to share if someone's listening in today and thinking, hmm, I don't know if I should speak to Joe or I don't know if I should do something about my health. Have you got any words of wisdom you'd like to share? Well, I would just not hesitate. Just actually make an appointment and come and see or talk to someone yeah. about caring for themselves. Yeah. Better. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than your life being wrecked or spoiled or cut short by not looking after yourself. Yeah. We've only got one life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and yeah, and I I just want to make memories really. Yeah. So um, with my family and with my grandkids and Yeah. And travel. Travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why not? Yeah. And you've been doing a lot of things um, in travelling so and we know then that with the foods that you're eating and travelling, we can combine them all together now. It makes it so much easier for you. Yeah. I think that yes, and I can see that even in a different country, I can make it work. Yeah. You know, so that's important because yeah. when when you travel overseas, you can't take your little esky with you. And <laughs> it makes it a little bit hard. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, we did it in New Zealand, but yeah. that was easier because yeah. we had a car. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go to some foreign countries and you just yeah. have to work around what's available. Correct. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it can work for me. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah I know it can. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, well, thank you for having a chat with me. I really enjoyed that. And um, if anyone would like to have a chat with me, feel free to contact me at any time. Look forward to seeing you again next month and keeping you on track. And that's what it's about, is staying on track and feeling the best and healthiest person that we are. Yeah, that's my, that's my aim. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I'm really there. You definitely are there. <laughs> See ya. No.